Hey folks, welcome back. Um, today we've got my 2006 Lincoln Town Car in the shop. Um, it just rolled over uh, a few months ago. 500,000 miles, currently at 502, almost 503,000 miles. And starting a couple of months ago, it um, started to, well, we've got two, two issues going on. They both kind of seem like it started about the same time. Um, but it sometimes takes a little bit longer cranking to start, whether it's warmed up or cold. <clears throat> it just, you know, just crank, 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 and then it finally fires off. Now it always does start, but it's getting to the point where, you know, there might be some issues going on. But the other issue that I, um, and that's intermittent, but the, the problem I just mentioned, it doesn't do it all the time. As a matter of fact, it probably does it out, you know, one or two out of every 10 times I try to start it. The other problem that's been starting about a couple of months ago has been that it's um, filling it up with gas. Um, for a long time, I've always just had it had on the, the lowest setting because if you let the pump run too fast, it just uh, shuts the pump off. It, there's probably a, a venting issue or that's progressively gotten worse. Whether the two problems with the tank venting um, have the issue with the you know vehicle not taking a long time to crank I don't know um, could be could not be but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna address the uh, the tank being hard to fill because that's pretty much the problem that um, if you've got multiple problems with the with the vehicle sometimes they can be related sometimes they, they may not be sometimes you might think they are and Chance, you know, and then they might not be, but but any stretch of imagination, it, you know, it, I start with basically fixing the obvious things and go from there. So in this case, we've got an intermittent problem that only shows up a few times. Um, fuel pressure is about 45 psi. Should be enough. The fuel filter has been replaced um, within the last three or four months, and you know, so we're just going to address the uh, fixing the you know the, the fuel tank problem, and maybe that will fix the long cranking. Maybe it won't, but the long cranking is probably going to have to get worse before I'll be able to you know because I can bring it in the shop here and I can try to start this thing up a whole whole bunch of times. You know, matter of fact, maybe we'll just try it right now. It's probably just going to crank and just go right off. Anyways, that's how it does most of the time. So let's get this uh, thing. Oh, the, um, the reason why I decided to bring it in today is we finally got a check engine light. Never had any check engine lights before. And now we've got one, so maybe we have... Um, you know something to show us um, which way to go so get you a different camera view and we'll hook up the um, scan tool and, and get it checked out and see what we find okay so we got my little dongle plugged in down here on the uh, <coughs> obd2 port turn the key on 502,786 miles telling me that the engine is due for an oil change but it just might be. Let's check the mileage on there. All right, we've got the key on. Let's go uh, look at the uh, scan tool. All right, we are using the Launch X431 scan tool today. Um, got a lot of videos on this car about how to fix certain things on there, and there's more to come. So if these things interest you or you've got one or you just are curious, um, you wanna check the rest of those out. So, all right, we are, I'm gonna to try to get this camera angled down a little bit more. And some stuff here. Okay, so we are going into, well, the way this scan tool works, as you bring up your app, it comes up like this local diagnose, um, American, European, all, whatever you're choosing to do, got Lincoln down here and hit OK.
Okay, I always choose the automatically search first, switch the ignition on, it is. Okay, got the right VIN number comes up, the right year of the car, this is a 2006. Uh, does the rear bumper have two sensors showing? This one does not. And I assume that that's probably like uh, backup sensors or something. Um, this car does not have that. And then we're going to go into system selection. We're going to choose the uh, powertrain control module. Okay, that comes up with this. Come over here to read the fault codes. Um, go here and retrieve. I don't know what CM stands for. Should, but I don't. Okay, so we got. Now I do have a problem with my fuel or my uh, fuel gauge. It reads basically whatever it decides it wants to, and so these uh, two here. Um, They aren't going to be anything we're going to be dealing with today, neither. Now, this throttle actuator ice breakage problem, um, I had that last winter. What that is, and I will we'll talk about it here uh, later on, but basically it's sometimes the, uh, the throttle plate <clears throat> inside the uh, throttle body kind of just sticks a little bit. And when it tries to open it, especially at startup, it tries to open it a little bit and it gets stuck. And that's usually when you get this um, fault here. So this definitely could be our long cranking problem, but I'm not seeing anything that has to do with the EVAP system. So we're going to go ahead and clear all of these, take a note of that um, 2072 fault. So we're going to clear these. That should turn our check engine light off. Um, my fuel gauge needs to be replaced. Now, now we've got the onboard. That wasn't up there before, but now it is. But that should go through its system after you drive it. So, okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna go into this actuation test. Okay, we're going to come up here and we're going to do this um, evaporation emission uh, vapor management valve, or excuse me, the uh, emission canister vent valve is what we're going to going to check here next. And usually I come in here, showing that's off right now. I'm going to add some data streams here. We're going to go. Um, uh, barometric pressure. Oops, that's hertz. We want pressure and PSI. We're going to choose uh, EVAP monitor leak and we're going to check the EVAP leak check ready. EVAP soak time conditions met. We're going to choose all these EVAP stuff on here. And then we hit OK, and then we're going to go start the car. Watch all that stuff. Okay, we got the car is running. Um, now, one thing you can do, now we can turn, so we can see we've got the evapor, um, EVAP canister vent valve at 0%. Um, so what we can do is we can turn it on, and that should go to 100%. There it goes seeing no error on any of this turn this back off okay it's off zero percent all that stuff still not running so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna exit out of this and so 
basically by turning that on and off, you know, it should tell us if we had a problem, if it did. So what another thing I want to do is now we got the car running, it's kind of sitting there doing its thing. We're going to go ahead and go to read data stream. And we're going to do the same thing with, um, basically cho choosing everything that we chose before. Okay. So the soak time conditions have been met. Canister purge fault, there's no error. Um, canister vent valve is off right now. Canister vent valve percentage is zero, so that's what it should be. We have not done the leak check yet. I don't think this will do it. I think it just has to do it on its own. Now, there's probably a lot of videos that are going to be <clears throat> a lot more in depth than what I can I can tell you on this because this some some of this stuff I'm learning myself. But we're just going through here. If you don't have one of these scan tools for doing this particular repair, um, so we are getting a little bit. We got varying for the vapor management valve. Whoops. Oh, whoops. Okay, there we go. We had one more. If you got a second window, you got one and two down here. And if you flip this up, then you got that last value there. So now we're at uh, two of two. Nope, did it again. trying just to get to the last bit of it. Vapor management valve is uh, doing its thing. Uh, we currently got no check engine light. Never mind my tape on the dash it is not taped over the check engine light um, I know I've got some tapes over here but that all oh, the cruise control light over there bugs the shit out of me when it's on so that's why the tapes there All right, so what do we think's wrong with it? Well, I believe that the uh, charcoal canister and, and some other um, stuff in this is probably um, plugged up or, or getting to be plugged up. Like I said, it's it's not always bad. It's just you have to set the pump on the lowest setting all the time. But every once, even sometimes, that's not quite enough. And so we'll show you what we're going to do is we're just going to pull all that stuff apart, take it and clean it. Um, it's hit or miss on the, on what, you know, if this was a customer's car, I would talk about different options to do. Most likely the best thing to do is to replace the charcoal canister. Um, this car, it's, since it's mine, and as many miles as it has on it, it's, it probably needs it, but I just wanna get a little bit more out of it, so I'm just gonna try to clean it, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do to clean it and all the rest of the stuff, so let's go on with that. And then uh, after, towards the end of the video, we will address the um, throttle body issue and show you what to do with that. All right, so we've got your gas fill here. That's obvious. What kind of a clown are you, dude? Okay. So in here, the main hole where the gas goes in, and the, these two little slots right there 
that's your vent, that's where the air comes out. Because when your tank is empty, it's full of air. And when you go to fill it up, that air needs to come out of the tank somewhere. And so the big line there is your line going into the tank and your small line going out. Now back in the day, old days, these vents used to just came out and they just went somewhere else. But nowadays you can't do that. All that stuff needs to be sealed. And that's why you get check engine lights come on when you don't have like a good gas cap or gas caps off or whatever. The charcoal canister's in there. So we're gonna get that out of there. And I'll show you about how to do that. All right, first thing we do, we got these two nuts underneath to here. Now mine look a little rusty since I used to live back in the Midwest. This car came from Chicago. These are, it looks like an 11. around it, but they are 11s. All right, I'll just pause it for a sec, because all we're doing is going to be screwing bolts out. No big deal. Okay, so once you got them two uh, nuts off of there, um, not every car has this. And apparently I'm full of gravel and shit in there. Um, it's just basically a protective cover, but like I said, not every car has that. Um, this deal is sitting on top of, you know, that. And so this does move a little bit. So I take and put the ears, kind of just tuck them underneath like this on both sides. I'd have to take that off anyways just because of all the rocks in there okay so that once you do that that'll allow this to come down and you got an electrical connector right here that needs to come off all you do is press in there get a little better light on the subject here and then once that you've got hoses over there we're gonna have to get them off Okay. Okay, I usually start with this and I just take a flat bladed screw driver on each side just carefully. Of course my hand's in the way of the light on each side and just carefully work this hose off of here. Like that. So all it is is just a uh, hose kind of on that nipple right there. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing from right there, right there where the end of that hook is. This comes off, but these tend to break a lot. I get it off from right here. And then once we put all this back together, I'll put some hose clamps on these. Once you've broken those, they um, tend to not seal as good anymore. I don't think I can film this at the same, same time. I get the screwdriver underneath of here. Okay, so we got that one worked off of there. Now our hoses are all free. And if yours has never been off of here, this side over here is going to be riveted on. At least this one is. So we're gonna have to drill them rivets out. Just take a drill and there's a head right there, right there. Drill those rivets out.
All right, get a drill bit about that big. I think it's a 1764. And if you want, what I'm gonna do is push this back up in place and stick the nut over it just to hold that end up like that. There. That way it stays put and then I'll just drill these out. See how it comes off like that? Free to come off. I'm going to put this camera back here where a better view of it. Put this nut off of here. Put the hose back out. And there it comes off. So I'll get you a different camera view and we'll look at this. And here is what we've got charcoal canister. There's the valve. We were talking about and I don't know everything about all of this you know I don't know what this is I don't know what this is all I know is this stuff um, it needs to flow air needs to flow through it what it does is it all the fumes and everything when your gas tank is filling and other times that it it vents in here because as you take gas out of the tank you don't want it to sit there and suck like you were, um, well, try sucking on a bottle of water without um, stick your mouth completely over it. The bottle of water wants to crinkle. We don't want that happening in your fuel tank. So at certain times, these will open, you know. I don't know everything about it. Like I said, I'm a diesel mechanic that's learning about um, automotive stuff. But I got the gist of it anyways. Um, so basically when we're filling this tank up, you know, the air is just not coming out of the tank very well. And it could be something in here is plugged up. Most likely it's this, but we could also have some other shit plugged up in here. Um, let's follow these hoses around and figure out what goes where. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get these... Uh, off of this uh, solenoid valve. So we'll just same thing we did before, we'll just carefully work these hoses off of here. Once you get it to twist. This side, you can get it to twist. Get this work screwdriver in here. should be replaced, but I don't got one right now. Okay, so I kind of lied a little bit. I was sitting there looking at this going, I've taken these apart before, um, but it's just this particular one. It doesn't come apart, but for one thing, I already know that this isn't clogged up because We can blow through it real easily. 
this isn't our issue. All right, so one thing to kind of do is take a little bit of compressed air. See the, that red cap? Can you see that on the camera? Probably if I get my... So what we're doing is got air coming all the way through and out that spout right there. And starting out, it's better. You know, I'm gonna just blow it through here. So I haven't really found any problems unless we've dislodged something, I don't know. We're gonna slide all this stuff back together. If these hoses seem like they fit too loose, just put some clamps on them. Okay, we are going to stick this thing back in. I'm not gonna worry about the rivets, I'm just gonna stick this in here. The two bolts will hold it just fine. <clears throat> I'll just pause the camera. All this is just reattaching this hose, and this hose, and this electrical connector, and pushing this back up in place. Okay, we got everything put back on there. Um, we'll just have to go try it out and see if it fills up better or not. We got our hoses reconnected, got our electrical connected to the solenoid valve. And now let's go um, have a look, see at that throttle body. Okay, throttle body's right in here. We're gonna do this clamp. I'm gonna take this off, just press down on that with your thumb and it pops right off. You can see that does, does that. To get it on, you just push it. That off of there, and we got a clamp right here. Loosen them. Grab it here, pull it. Get that pulled off of there. This side here, a little stuck. I might need two hands. There we go. And the throttle body. Let's get a different take camera off the tripod here. See how that moves with your motor there. Used to have a cable years ago. Cable would operate these from your from your go pedal. Sometimes these get stuck, so I'm gonna spray some uh, carbon or uh, throttle body cleaner in there, clean it up some. No, we just spray it in here and go past where it goes what I mean by that is you know wipe it past in here another thing I'll do is um, stick something like that in there so you can get the spray down in there past where it goes on both sides Then you can just wipe everything out. 
all along here as you're pushing. See how I'm pushing in here, wiping it out. And make sure you get all your rag out. Every piece, because then it'll get sucked in the engine. I'm gonna need two hands to get that out though. So hopefully the camera will stay there. I'll push this like that. Spray a little on the back side of it. Up inside here. Still a little bit there. Just kind of wipe up in here like this as I'm kind of holding that down and then I'll wipe on the back side of the butterfly valve and I got some shit piece of rag stuck in here again just have a look see in there and make sure that everything is is out It operates a little freely. And then put it back together. It's usually what causes, uh, if you keep continuing to have that problem, you're probably gonna have to replace this. Um, but that's usually what that fault that we saw before um, is this gets stuck in a position and it can't, uh, usually it gets stuck kind of maybe closed. I don't know for sure exactly what it's supposed to do or whatever. I assume it idle. It runs just like that. So what could be happening is it could be sticking closed like this. Maybe it's supposed to, you know, if it <clears throat> possible. See, like, see, I let off of it and it does that. Now that may be what it's supposed to do. I don't know. Um, but what it could be doing is it could be stuck like this and it stays like this and that's why it takes so long to crank and start because this hasn't broken free yet or something if it if it does i really don't know that much about this particular car and these deals wherever before i've replaced this years ago but um totally unrelated type of a problem so All right, so we got that all put back on. Give it a try here. Wait for the idle to calm down a little bit. There it goes, perfect. And sometimes when you, after you've done do this and you fire this up, it might take a little bit more cranking than your normal, <clears throat> depending on how much of this you sprayed in there because it's gonna go straight into the intake and be in there until that, you know, because it might start up and it might kind of fuddle around a little bit and then it should clear itself out right quick. Stuff flammable, but, um, it's, it's kind of it res, resembles me like starting fluid and stuff like that it is more like what it would resemble in there once that all clears out it should be pretty good so i'm gonna go try the fueling this thing up and see how that works well here's the moment of truth full power Yep. It's as fast as you, this pump runs, but before I could just barely get it to the first click, which would be that'd be your speed right there that I used to get out of it. Here's what we can get now. Not a lot, but it's more than double. So, looking good. 
a little snowy out today but so far um, just driven around the block a little bit here and no check engine lights at all kick up the speed a little bit now that we're getting out of out of town so far when we pull back in the shop we will um, after we make this round we'll see if it that p1000 code <clears throat> went away but tank filled up really nice I don't know what we dislodged we dislodged something because something was plugged up in there I just didn't actually see what it was <clears throat> um, so anyways that's you know all we can do we dislodged something by out of those hoses or something like that um, if you didn't have good airflow coming out of your charcoal canister um, you can replace it or you can dump some dish soap and try to get some pour some water through it I've cleaned them out that way when they've gotten so packed full of dust um, you know anything like that um, I had good airflow pumping through it so I figured I just you know get it all and we could have just dislodged something inside of that um, charcoal canister thing whatever they want to call it um, and that's most likely we dislodged something in there that was you know was still working okay because it wasn't setting off any emissions uh, faults um, such as like a P0442 I think is is like an evap leak but sometimes things get plugged up can cause those too so anyways um, yeah we'll just finish this drive we'll get back in the shop and then we'll um, have a look see and see uh, what everything looks like from there um, all the while the four or five or maybe six starts that I've had since cleaning the uh, throttle body you know they've all it, things started up just fine so that's possibly what could have went wrong was you know it just sticking a little bit I remember having that problem last winter I just cleaned it and <clears throat> boom it you know it it continued to work again for the rest of the winter and for all the summer up until about a couple of months ago when I started having that problem so anyways um, there's my turn but I was not paying attention but just cruise around here real slow I was like you know I'm out here in a farm area and everything so there's not a lot of traffic going on but I was thinking I was almost gonna have to bypass that turn because I wasn't paying attention because I'm sitting here talking to you all I was watching where I was going but I wasn't paying attention to you know all of a sudden there come up and on a normal when roads are dry of course you could just chuck and duck and make it but um, I'm just now coming up to a uh, stop and go sign it we're on a lot busier street so I'm gonna go ahead and stop filming now because I don't need to be driving in this weather when there's more traffic on the road so we'll see when we get back to the shop all right let's see what we got go back in here like we did before Okay, we still got the um, <clears throat> P1000. It's got to go through its tests, and I can't remember on different cars do it differently as far as um, how long it takes to run it. So there's going to be more drive cycles probably needed. So that's what we're going to do is just continue driving it. Check engine light is off. We can fill the gas up on full power. So everything is good. Well, so hopefully that kind of helps you out a little bit and get you out of the jam if you're having that issue. <clears throat> that way you can, you know, fix it. Just make sure you, you know, you blow through all the hoses and, and whatnot. Just make sure everything's clear. Like I said before, I didn't actually find what was. Something was in there and plugged up and we just lodged something. I really don't know what it was. So, anyways, um... That's that. Um, should work on a lot of different uh, vehicles besides that car. It's just that your systems gonna all be all be different 
for various different vehicles, but they all pretty much work the same. So anyways, um, with that, thanks for watching.